listen to spring. Woodpeckers, birds singing. It's a beautiful morning, and well, I'm here again. We're going to go and have a little bit of a breakfast, noodles and tuna, I think today. And some other bits to go with it. Um, got Elf the Wonder Dog with me, the great foraging hound. He's over in the corner there, sniffing around. And, well, I'm going to wind my way up to my little place maybe, have a wander around. I'm feeling quite good. A lighter pack today, we'll explain why in a minute. Well guys, as you know, this is my favourite spot. Um, just down there there's a path going across. I occasionally see dog walkers and... Also, um, motorcyclists, which are really annoying, and we'll probably get a few of those this week in these woodlands because it is the end of term and they, they've got two weeks off. The main reason for this bit of the video is to show you the ground. Look, this ground is tinder dry. Whoops, there we go. It's tinder dry at the moment. It feels damp, but by it, you get a fire going, and well, bang goes sixpence basically. And so, until we get wetter weather, I'm not doing any open fires at all. I'm just going to use my Trangia cooker and other forms of um, non open fire basically, you know bit more on it in a minute. Anyway, I'm going to get breakfast set up. There's a little Elfie there, more wonder hound. Well, um... Fine egg noodles reduced to 50p for Marks and Spencers. And they're going to go into the pan. Whoa, yeah, you can't get the top off. And whoa. And I've got something here. Oh, I've done with it. Oh, yeah. Bit of a tomato sauce thing we made up yesterday. And some skip back tuna. I want to save the tuna, I've got plans for that. So here we go. Oh, the tea's brewing, by the way. Oh, can't you just love that thing? Right. Put a drop of water in there. Very useful little jars, these. Um, be putting some pickles and preserves in them later in the year when I get to do my foraging. So there we go, give this a little stir around. I do like this Tatonka pot. It's a really, really good piece of kit. Yep, still got some flame in there. Yeah. 
Now I've alerted the bearers that I'm cooking something up. Right, anyway, I'm going to let this carry on cooking and I'll be back in a minute. Well guys, uh, it's my first cup, my second one's infusing now, um, it's a nice brew actually, um, actually ain't bad cup so I might use the uh, the foil, the foil bubble wrap stuff that I bought to, um, to make an insulating thing for this, this neoprene is not too bad but I was thinking come winter it's going to be a lot colder obviously and it's um it needs to keep warm uh, it's bone dry I took a decision last week not to do any more open fires until at least the ground's a little bit wet um, it really is so dry it's a very cold day today it's uh, we had a bit of a, a slight frost this morning it was wonderful seeing the blades of grass green but edged with white with that sort of frosted white it really looked nice and quite um, ethereal um, just cleaning my pot up now so I'll be using the uh, Trangia burner or one of my other setups until until some so better weather comes. It is so dry. I really cannot believe this is the this is the driest time we've had since 1976. And then, as I may have mentioned in the past, we actually run out of beer. Um, if it gets any drier, excuse me a minute. If it gets any drier, I think we'll be uh, annexed to the Sahara Desert or the Mojave or wherever. It really is bad. Um, though there is snow predicted for this weekend, which will be fun, as it's Easter weekend. As you may have seen in my previous video, I've inflated the canoe, and I'll be taking it out for a, a maiden run soon. I would have done it on the little lake near me this week, but uh, it's school holidays, and they'll all be out fishing and I don't want to disturb the fishermen I find it bizarre that they sit there all day waiting to catch a fish they catch the fish they look at it and then put it back um, I used to fish in fact I've got a fishing kit now and I still will fish but I have a tendency to fish for food you know, it's uh, it's it's part of the hunting premise, and I'll come on to something about that in a minute. Uh, got a very good book last week called uh, Movable Feasts. I uh, published by Cicero, and I can't remember the. I can remember one author, which is Amy Beer. She's a biologist, and Cicero Press. Uh, basically, they're a publishers that deal with all aspects of the outdoors. They do guidebooks and route guides for walking and mountain climbing and various guides for various countries. First aid books, navigation books and this one is a very good book on food for camping. Um, <clears throat> in a way the book's split into three parts. It's not a heavy tome, you know, you can sling it in your backpack. The first part deals with nutrition, the middle part deals with kit and hygiene and what have you. And the last bit is the most important bit, and that deals with the recipes. And there's some nice recipes what I want to try. Um, this morning I had fresh noodles, not, not dried noodles. I had fresh noodles, they were fine egg noodles, and they were fine, they were really nice. Mixed with a little tomato saucy thing of my concoction. Basically it's a, uh, a winter vegetable gravy mix which is a vegetarian mix, mixed with tinned tomatoes. It slightly thickens it up and it gives it a nice edge, along with some skipjack tuna. Um, I don't eat much meat as a rule, but when I'm out, 
uh, I like to have some some meat because it adds it adds protein and flavour to the meal. Um, I can cook vegetarian meals outside, but you know it's a uh, there's something in my ethos, you know, it's there's something that I I think about. Um Yeah, it's some bourbon and yeah. Yeah, the um the book is very good. The first part deals with nutrition, what to eat and why we need to eat it. Too often we take an unbalanced meal out with us, you know. We think we need all of this, you know, we the most ubiquitous thing in camping or camping, bushcrafting, wilderness schools, whatever, is the eating of noodles, um, mostly instant noodles. I think it's because it's convenience, it weighs little in the pack. I mean, I try to take a bit of fresh food out with me, because if you're going out just for an overnight or a very short weekend, you know, it, it really lifts the meal, you know, you're not left with um, mush. Um, but having said that, you know, each to his own. Uh, it is a very good book, and it's, you know it goes through cooking equipment, you know everything from campfires to a Trangia cooker, and then the recipes at the back. There's a couple of recipes I want to try. There's a type of oat cake, and it, um, which is looks like looks like wet cement when it's mixed, but you know it, you cook it on the griddle or on the little frying pan. Um, as regards the Trangio cooker I use today, I've used that rather than the uh, aluminium pots basically because the actual burner fits inside there, everything fits inside and I find the aluminium pot just a little bit on the small side for myself. That's a two litre pot, I can chuck a big wad of noodles in there and fill myself up. I do eat a lot. Um, That is a nice brew that poor. Um whoops lady, there we go. Yeah we do we we tend to um we tend to take not take our food too seriously when we're out. You know, it's um it's a shame really because cooking outdoors is really fun. Like for me it's fun. And I'm intending to expand a bit more on that during the year. Um, I'm going on a, a foraging course later in the year. And um, I've got two or three altogether. And I'm quite looking forward to it. <coughs> I'll do a few shout outs to people. Uh, there's, one, there's one young man, well, everybody seems younger than me. Um, Sandy, nice chap. Never met him yet, though I intend to I intend to get some dirt time at some point in here. There's lots of lovely birdies about. It's, it's a very nice morning here. The uh, sun's coming up, it's gonna warm up a bit later. I mean, I've got winter gear on at the moment, or my, my uh, light winter gear. Anyway, and uh, um, he made a he got an old file and he made himself a flint and steel and then what he's done off his own back, he didn't go on a course or anything for this. He did, he made up a bow drill set and got fire. Well done, Sandy. Um, before you start doing the uh, hand drill, Sandy, go and have a look at Ray Mears when he was doing the, uh, I think it was the Walkabout series in Australia. He ripped his hands to shred trying to do, trying to do hand drill. Now, this is a guy that's very, very experienced. And as you saw in my uh, last breakfast video, we don't always get the far that we want when we're trying to do something, right? The stuff was just too damp. It was a very foggy morning. Everything was just damp. He was trying two different woods and he never did get the fire going. He just ripped his hands to shreds. When you're doing that, it does create hot spots on your hands. And I've, I've copped one blister when doing hand drill, but. I've been very lucky because I stop as soon as my hands start feeling overly warm. If you carry on, it's you will get blisters. And on that, um, though I can do hand drill and I can do bow drill, and I'm going on a, 
uh, a long weekend doing advanced firelighting techniques, using using starting off using hand drill, bow drill, refreshing on that, and moving on to fire plough, fire saw, and what have you, and other fire lighting techniques and fire lays. <coughs> I try to be comfortable out here. I don't want to be sweating and getting frustrated on not being able to get an ember up. I come out to enjoy my time out in the woods, whether I have an open fire or whether I have a Trangia going, or I'm thinking of getting a, a little Primus type setup as well for when it's really cold because mess is a bugger to light when it's below zero. I, um, I think you know sometimes too much focus is on it. It's so uh, there's a there's a an ego thing, which is great, you know. And we all have individual skills. Now, um, I'm as I mentioned, the canoe is having to lay up for a while until the kids have stopped fishing. I'm looking forward to doing some videos off of that, and I've got a new video camera. Unfortunately, I can't use it because the guy sold me the wrong size card to go in it. I've got to get a micro SD card and he gave me a standard one. So I couldn't use it. It's waterproof to a depth of 10 feet or 3 meters and shockproof to 2 meters or 6 feet. Um, quite looking forward to using it. It actually looks more like a mobile phone than anything else. Um, it's made by Samsung and uh, I'm quite looking forward to actually getting out and using it. I'm going to make up a lanyard so that it'll either be attached to me or attached to the canoe. So if it does get knocked overboard, I can fish it back in. Um, on that part, I'm going to uh, get um, going to make up some guy lines and some uh, cordage up for making sure that I don't lose stuff overboard. And then, as I mentioned in the video, I want to do a little net or maybe cut some um, ground sheet material up into a triangle so that can be clipped on and use that as a bit of a bulkhead and stow have geared stowed away underneath. At the moment, I'm just itching to get out on the boat. I'm not going to go on the river yet, I just want to go on the lake because there's no current on the lake. And some sound advice from somebody. Uh, to use the skeg, which is like a little keel, because as it's, it's on the water and not in the water, it, you'll blow, you get blown across if it's a strong wind. Um, what else is there? What else have I noticed over the last week? Oh yeah, um, theory and practice. Yes, theory and practice. We all go out there and we all do our thing, you know. There's, you know, whether in Canada, South Africa, Australia, America, Scandinavia, wherever, Germany even, even the UK. We all have our own approach to this, this wilderness skills, bushcraft, call it what you will, camping with benefits. The one thing that I do get annoyed with and is people that post stuff that are straight from a book and they've never actually done it. Um, chap on one of the forums I'm on posted all these traps up and you saw this wonderful little trap, type of spring trap. You know, I didn't need a knife or anything to make it and thought it was wonderful. The fact is, he's never made this trap, he's never actually done this trap. Everything I do, if I, if I mention something, I've actually done it, you know, if I go out, if I say I've been out foraging for dandelions, I've gone out and foraged for dandelions. If I say I've made a particular type of trap, or I mention a particular type of trap, I've made that trap, but I've, I've seen it working, I've used my, um, I've used a stuffed animal and stuck it in and that's been the, uh, the prey, and, and I've, I've seen the trap working. Whether I actually catch anything with the traps, because trapping is a very, very, um, is a very, very difficult art in, in some respects. Um, if you want to catch a rabbit, you don't set a snare. You've got to set a minimum of 30 snares in order to hope to get to get some comeback on it. And then you might not snare what you want. I mean, I did a course the other year where it's, a, it's called Intermediate Bushcraft. 
and part if it was setting snares out. And as a group, we set about, I suppose, about 30 snares, 30 to 50 snares altogether. And we did catch one rabbit, and we also inadvertently caught a badger. Luckily, the badger wasn't too harmed by it, and he scuffled off rather disgruntled into the woods. But it goes to show that trapping is indiscriminate. I would sooner go shooting with an air rifle and use a bit of patience. The, the, I mean, the good thing with trapping is you put your traps down, you put your snares out, and you can leave them and carry on with other stuff. But you must go back at least twice a day to make sure that your traps are clear. And also with trapping, you need to do an awful lot of traps. Out. You've got to do, I think what I call in America and Canada, a trap line. You know, and you, you go out and you lay lots of traps out because you've got to be sure of catching what you want to eat. You know, luckily, we I, I mean, particularly in the UK, we're never far away from some urban settlement. So there's normally a village shop or... If you're going out to where you're going to camp, you can pop into the local supermarket and get your get your hunter-gatherer stuff, you know, the uh, the side of cow or whatever. But regardless, of that, that's my views. You know, if if people are going to start mentioning trapping and that, make sure that you go and do it. And you know what you're talking about because otherwise, you know, you're going to look silly in the end, particularly when you get someone more experienced coming along and saying, well. I wouldn't use that trap because, you know, it's not efficient or it looks efficient but it isn't, you know. Anything that requires bending wood and using something like hazel or a sapling as a spring, after a while will fail because the wood actually ends up staying that shape. You know, it loses its springiness after a while and loses its effectiveness. Um, and also trapping can be pretty indiscriminate. You might not, you know, as I said earlier, you know, you might you might set a snare for a rabbit and end up with a badger. And um, I put I pick my chances against a rabbit any day. An angry badger is a nasty beast to come across. Um, I've come into a small inheritance, or will be, and I'll be getting two new bits of kit. Um, these are a big treat to myself. I mean, super treat. If you go onto the Ray Mears site, Woodlaw, you'll see there's the Ray Mears axe, which I've used and briefly on a, on a campcraft course, and it's a nice axe, it's a nice piece of kit, and I'm getting the uh, Ray Mears Woodlaw knife, not the, no, it's a Ray Mears bushcraft knife, I'm not getting the Woodlaw knife because there's a very, very long waiting list, and to be quite honest, I think, you know, it's, I'm getting the bushcraft knife, which is virtually the same knife, um, except for it's got oak handles. They use oak scales, and it looks a nice piece of kit. Um, it's a treat to myself. I've always vowed that I would never buy one for one reason or another. I think it's because I get a little bit wound up over knife junkies, but it's a treat to myself. It will see me out. It's a nice piece of kit. Um, whether I'll be doing one of these next week or not, I'm not sure. My my release date from work is this weekend, and I, you know, from where I'm working at the moment, and my transfer is going over to the Tunbridge Wells store. But at the moment, it's all in a bit of a pickle, so I don't quite really know what's going on at the moment on that. And on that, I'm just going to give a few shout outs to a few people. There's Sandy. Um, tune into his channel if you're not into it, it's really good. Um, what I'll do is I'll put a link underneath this this section of the uh, video and go to his chat. He's a nice chap, he's a radio amateur, he primarily does key work, he doesn't do audio work and plays guitar, though he hasn't done a video on that so we're not quite sure how he did on his uh, exam. And he's a chap that just genuinely enjoys the outdoors. We all enjoy the outdoors. There's a guy called Mick up in the up in the Lancashire, and um, again, he enjoys the outdoors. We've got to get out and enjoy it. <coughs> and on that, there was a a thing on the BBC. Uh, there's a new 
a new disorder that's been recognised or has come to the fore amongst children. It's called nature deficit disorder. And they've noticed that children that get out and do stuff in the nature, you know, they get out into the woods, they're doing stuff, are far more well adjusted. You know, they're, they're, they're better team players, uh, they're better organisers. And in general, hello, it looks like the police are flitting around. Was that the air ambulance? I'm not sure. <clears throat> and the, you know, and they do sort of um, just just getting kids out into doing this makes them in a way a better a better person. Whether it's just a load of cycle babble, I don't know. But the whole idea of what we call in the UK forest schools is coming to the fore, and it seems that a lot of kids. It helps a lot of kids organise their lives better. You know, they're not they're not so tired. They go in and they got to watch. They've got to do the Xbox thing or whatever. I mean, we all like online games, but there's nothing better than playing outdoors. Well, on that, I'm gonna finish my brew, have a bit of a chill, and have a bit of a wonder. I think. You know, it's it's great. I'm, I'm just enjoying it and everything is nice. The year moves on and I can't believe it's April already. I mean, April. A quarter of the year has gone. No. A third of the year has gone. And it's colder now than what it was in January. Bizarre. And I'm going to go and have the rest of this Pua tea, which I highly recommend if you find it. Um, you might find it in a specialist tea dealers or a specialist uh, coffee shop. Um, you won't find it in the local supermarket. But. And I've got a, bit of sh bit of, a few things to get this afternoon. Little doggy down here has run out of food. So we've got to get him some dinner. So I'll catch you all later, guys. And just a big thank you to you all for watching this video. And yeah, just thank you. It's nice. Bye. Well, somewhere up there, there's a squirrel. I've watched him go from there, across to there. You can hear that woodpecker in the distance. It's a little bit later on. Marvellous in it. Really good place to be. Nothing like being out in the nature.